Hey everyone, um, this is going to be a short video to help take you through what to do with your data once you have um, collected it. So you have just finished collecting data or measurements or observations from a lab. Um, so how do you create a graph of the data in Google Sheets? Well, this is going to um, hopefully show you and will be a resource for you to go back and review when you are working on your graphs or data analysis at home throughout the rest of the year. So um, first step that you need to do is to open a Google Sheets um, document in Google Drive. Um, you can do that by going to New. And so say if you are in your Drive, you go to New, and there you go. Google Sheets. You can go ahead and you can, I think, um, you're going to want to do it from a blank spreadsheet. So you can open up your Google Sheets from there and make sure, as with all of your Google Documents, that you put in a good, um, a good title so that you can find your document and go back to work on it later. Um, okay, so this is the setup of the Google Sheets. It's kind of Google's equivalent of Microsoft Excel. Um, or numbers if you use uh, a spreadsheet on a Mac. Um, there are different, um, you know, kind of quick access bar um, icons so that you can do different things um, when you are creating your spreadsheet or your data table. Um, but you really don't have to do anything to get started. So um, the first thing that you do need to do is to think about what you want your graph to look like um, in the end. And this really depends on the type of data that you've collected. So if you have graphed data um, over time, that is considered to be continuous data, right? Time runs continuously. Um, you would probably want to, con to have a line graph. So um, there are different um, options for inter entering um, a chart or sorry, inserting a chart or a graph, um, but you first have to put the data in there. So like it says right here, there's no data, so it can't create a graph for me, but there is um, a chart editor that will take you through that step once we get there. Um, but there are different graphs. You have line graphs. Um, something called an area graph, which kind of um, is similar to a line graph, but has shaded in areas beneath. It's good for um, comparison, and um, particularly if you're comparing kind of amounts of something over time. Um, and then we have our column or bar graphs. For whatever reason, the bar graphs in Google Spreadsheets are horizontal and the column graphs are vertical, but you have a couple different options. Um, and then you have some things such as a pie graph, scatter charts, um, and there are different uses of those graphs. Um, there are some other options, but really in order to be able to use the other options, you have to, or really to use any of these options, you have to be able to put your data into um, a data table correctly. So let's first get started with that. Um, for this lab, for this example, Hold on, let me delete this. For this example, we're going to be using sample data from the Paleoclimate Lab. So um, when you are collecting the data for this experiment, um, we are going to be collecting uh, and figuring out the amount of different pollen grains that are in a particular soil sample. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is set up two different columns. So the first column is going to be my pollen grain types. Um, and in the lab, they're going to be beads of different colors. So you could either do pollen grain types. Um, you could even include the colors if you wish. OK. The second column is going to be where you put your data. So for this, we were for this lab, you are simply counting the number of pollen grains of each type. So the category, like we said, is different types of pollen grains. 
and then what we're recording is the amount. So um, let's just do number of grains. All right, so we have our first column is the type or the category, and then the number is going to be in the second column. It is important that you organize your data in this way, um, so kind of the category or whatever is going to be on the x-axis or the horizontal axis of the graph is in the first column, and then the value is going to be in the second column. All right, so let's put some information in here. So I already have a sample data table on this other sheet, so let me we'll quickly go and sample that. So here is our pollen taxa or categories. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste that to make this easier and quicker. Um, and then for the number of grains for this um, example, I am just going to make up some data, but you do have particular data um, that you should use. So let's see, for this example, let's say there's um, 30 alder, 10 birch, 2 fir, 5 hemlock, um, 20 oak, 1 pine, 9 ragweed, 50 sedges, 6 spruce, and I don't know, 12 viburnum. So once again, each of these are different types of plants that are growing in a particular area. And then these were the number of pollen grains that we were able to sample from our soil sample. Um, if you wanted to create or compare um, multiple samples, then you would set up your sheet in something like this, where you have the different columns showing the different time periods. Um, but for now and for the purpose of um, this lab, you are just going to create a graph with your data to start. Um, so let's just start here. Okay, so now we have our data table. You don't need to worry too much about um, formatting here. Um, what you do in here is not really, except for telling the computer what kind of data to take, um, it's not going to. Like for instance, since you have red in or alder in red, it's not going to necessarily make that data red in the graph. You can do you'll do that afterwards. All right, something that is very important is that when you are putting values into your data table, you only have numbers or you have letters. Um, the program does not is not able to graph values that have a mixed value. So for example, if you wrote 30 grains, um, when you go to graph it, it would indicate that there was an error. Um, this happens, it's not a problem. All you have to do is just go back and delete that and just make sure that you only have numbers in these columns that need to be graphed. Obviously you can write words and letters for the categories, um, but when it comes to the value that you want to graph, it's important that it is only numbers. All right, so the next step is to make your graph. So now that we've created the table, um, we are going to create the chart or the graph in this case. So in order to do that, you first have to select the data that you want micro, um, the Google Sheets to be able to graph. The nice thing about this is that you can actually have multiple data tables in one spreadsheet. So for example, if I had a additional columns of information, but I only wanted to cre create a graph of this information, I can do that. Um, so that's pretty nice. So you don't have to create a whole new document for another set of data. So select the data that you want to graph. And then you're going to go up to insert. So up at the top, you have insert as one of the menu items, and you're going to go to the chart icon. Um, there's also kind of a quick 
hot button that's over on the um, top right of the screen. So you have the insert chart icon. You can just directly click on that too. But if you can't see it for some reason, go up to insert and then chart. And it'll take you to the chart editor. Now, Google Sheets automatically creates a graph for you, but it doesn't mean that it is done. You still need to make sure that there's some good information. Um, so first, you have, as you can see, you want to make sure that all of your data can be seen at the bottom. Sometimes when the graphs are small or smaller, they will take out some of the labels on the bottom. Um, so you want to make sure that you can see all your labels. It's readable, it's usable, it's accessible to who's ever looking at your graph. Um, so here we have across the bottom, we have the names of the different um, plants, the different um, plants that created the pollen that you were counting in the soil sample. Um, if for some reason you notice, oh my gosh, I spelled um, hemlock incorrectly, a really cool thing is you don't have to delete this graph. You actually just go back into, oops, you go back to your data table and change, I don't know, say if you first said, I don't know if it's shamrock instead that you're supposed to have. you can make the correction in your data table and it'll automatically update your graph. This is also, it does the same thing if you realize, oops, I made a mistake in typing. Instead of five, it's supposed to be 15. You can make that correction and it'll automatically update the amount in the graph. So that's really, I think, a very helpful tool. All right, let me fix this. Okay, so, and again, if you log out for some reason, you want to get back into the chart editor, go up to the little kind of three dot icon, click on that and go to edit chart and it'll take you back to the chart editor view. All right, critical things, you have to label your axes. So yes, we have a X axis label, so it's pollen grain type. Um, remember I did put in color, we haven't color differentiated these yet. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that in another video. Um, it's not necessary right now, but double check that you have your correct labels. You should have units. So for example, this is the number of pollen grains. If I want to be even more specific, um, when you click on this, you can edit within the graph, or if you would prefer, um, over in the chart editor, instead of setup, if you go to customize, this is where you can adjust different titles, legends, um, horizontal and vertical axes, and you can also put in grid lines. Um, so if I want to change, let's say, my horizontal axis title, you need to click on chart and axis titles. And then there's a drop down menu where you have a variety of um, options. So personally, I don't like this um, title. I, it's not inaccurate. It's not the worst, but I think your title should be as um, informative as possible. So um, let's give this, this chart is, um, let's see, pollen grain types from soil sample if you're doing say 10,000 um, years before present. Um, you could do that or you could do just pollen grain types from soil sample A. And if you wish to do a subtitle, that's where you can put in, for example, the different time periods. So if this was from 10,000 years ago, um, you can add that in. Um, I also like to put the location. So if you're in a particular location, um, this is for the Anacostia River um, region. So you can add that as well. All right. So yes, we have our um, axes. We have our data displayed. We have a good descriptive title. You're good to go.